So a little while ago I featured a Mont Blanc GMT here on my channel. That was a silver white dial heritage version. Today I have the salmon or copper dial to show you guys. And I think this is one of the best dials that I've ever featured on my channel. It's a watch that I actually own and I'm very proud to own it. I think it's a really beautiful watch. So it comes in the exact same packaging. It comes in an outer box, which is cardboard. Inner box is leather, it's signed Mont Blanc right there. They give you information on the strap. They also give you information on the movement. So they do a Mont Blanc laboratory test 500. So it's tested for 500 hours and it's done by one person and they actually sign this certificate and let you know that they completed that 500 hour test, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then of course it comes with this giant booklet, which all Mont Blanc watches come with. Uh, it's very, very heavy and it has a lot of information in it. And of course, here is the watch. It comes with this little tag here, it just says Mont Blanc on it. Um, this is the strap that the, uh, they give you a little pamphlet about the strap because this is an Italian made strap, I believe. Um, and it sort of is a, it's a crocodile strap and it has a beautiful pattern on it that is sort of darker on the edge and then lighter towards the center. Uh, same strap that was on that silver dial version. Uh, however, I think it looks even better on this watch than it did on that watch. And in general, I think this watch looks way better than that white dial. Now this is my watch, I actually purchased this. Um, however, there are sites that have this in stock. This is a watch that has been discontinued. This specific watch is actually available on exquisitetimepieces.com. Like I said, they don't just support me in any way. However, they do have this in stock, so I figured I'd give them a shout out if anybody is actually interested in this watch. It originally retailed for around $3,100 or $3,200. They have it for around $2,500, I believe, which is a pretty decent price. But getting right into it, really the star of the show on this watch is the dial. This has a salmon copper dial, and it's really hard to actually capture on film because it just doesn't give you the rich uh, sort of texture and dimension of this dial. There are a few different areas of the dial. So you have a minute track that goes all the way around. That's in a printed blue color. Then there's a sort of pebbled area. That's where all of the indices are. All of the indices are actually in a gunmetal color, I guess. They're darkened slightly. And that's the same thing for the hour and minute hand. The minute hand is actually curved. And I believe the dial is slightly curved as well. And then you get to the center of the dial and that looks like sort of a sunburst pattern. It's a brushed, um, excuse me, it's more of a satin finish, uh, I would say. It's actually a very, very beautiful dial with a lot of different finishings. And then uh, you also get a GMT hand. The GMT hand is in that same blue color. Um, there is loom applied here as well. So there's actually loom, there's super luminova on here. It's not a lot, but technically this is a dress GMT. It is a office GMT because it is powered by a Salita SW310, I believe it is. Uh, it could be that or an ETA 2893. I'm not exactly sure which one they're using. It's not really readily available on their website. They call it something else, uh, but really that's what it is. You do get a domed sapphire crystal. You do not get tons of AR coating, as you can see, because it does reflect a lot in my uh, in my studio but in person it does calm down a little bit and uh, you could definitely see and enjoy that dial uh, you get the primary indices the 12 9 6 and 3 o'clock and then you get dots just those little dots that are like in a polish a high polish gunmetal finish and uh, that's really it uh, really simple very well executed beautiful dial uh, and again this is inspired by minerva so what uh, Mont Blanc did, or basically uh, Richemont did, which is the parent company for Mont Blanc. They actually bought Minerva. They gave Minerva essentially to Mont Blanc. And what Mont Blanc do for their heritage uh, collection of watches, they go into the Minerva sort of folder of watches from their past. And Minerva are a very storied, very historic brand, uh, especially of chronographs and, and a bunch of different watches. Um, and they have a really great history. So what Mont Blanc are doing is sort of recreating those with the Mont Blanc logo on it. They're using their vintage Mont Blanc logo. They actually created this logo for their Minerva watches. And then on the back, on the case back, you're getting a beautiful engraving of the Minerva factory. Also, there are you know uh, uh, other versions of this watch that are way more high end. They actually came out with one with a Minerva movement in it. I think they were selling that for around $10,000. Uh, that was a time only, it had a small seconds, 
very beautiful watch. However, this is very, very close to that watch. It looks a lot like that watch. You're getting basically 95, 99% of the style and looks of that watch and the quality really uh, for uh, essentially a fraction of the price. But they also make chronographs using Minerva, Minerva movements now. Uh, and those are very expensive. And actually, I think it was, um, I, I forget what YouTube channel it might have been, uh, Watch uh, Watchfinder & Co. I think it was Watchfinder & Co. Actually did a comparison between a chronograph from Patek Philippe and a chronograph from Mont Blanc. Now, obviously, they said the Mont Blanc wasn't as nice, but they said for the price, it was actually very competitive. So anyway, uh, including the domed sapphire crystal on here, it is 11.8 millimeters thick. So it's on the thinner side. It could be thinner. It only has 50 meters of water resistance. The lug to lug on here is uh, a decent 47.9 millimeters. And then the crown actually pretty large at 6.1, which I am glad to see, which is not bad. Actually 6.3, I had it in the wrong spot there. This is like a 40 millimeter watch, but uh, it's a little bit bigger than that. And it does wear bigger than that. So 40.6. It wears bigger than that or looks bigger than that because of the very thin bezel. Um, but it's really nicely finished. The entire watch is essentially uh, polished. As you can see, it's very vintage inspired um, and you get basically an entirely polished case, but it is beautiful. I'll do a lot of close-ups of this dial so you can see what I am talking about. Uh, and then you get the Mont Blanc buckle here, which is basically typical for Mont Blanc. It's a very nice buckle, milled, and again, all polished, signed. Um, and then this beautiful strap. This beautiful strap, uh, I have to say, is really gorgeous. Um, and it has these big sort of rectangles, uh, you know, the, the uh, crocodile on here. Uh, and it has that sort of fume look to it. So it's darker towards the edges, lighter towards the center. Um, it is bolstered, which I don't like. And it's such a thin watch. Well, it's not very thin. So I guess it's fine on this strap, but if it was any thinner, I would have wanted non-bolstered strap. I don't like that. One thing I do complain about with may maybe all major brands, most major brands, uh, is, the, is the fact that they don't put quick release on here. These are curved also, which is a pain. Um, and if you want to change your strap on this watch, it's very, very difficult. And they do that on purpose because they want you to bring your watch in to get your strap changed for whatever reason. Um, micro brands and a lot of independent brands are just putting quick release on their straps and it's way easier. And I don't understand why they don't do it. It's really hard to get the strap off and on of this, on this watch, uh, because of those curved ends. So, uh, it's kind of silly, but anyway, let me quickly throw it on my wrist and then we will do a quick loom shot and then wrap up the video. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to do plenty of close ups of this dial because it is really one of the nicest dials that I've had on this channel. Today I have on a Grand Seiko. This is a Grand Seiko chronograph. This is the non-GMT version. However, you do get the power reserve and it is a chronograph with that big date. Uh, sapphire bezel on here as well. Uh, this is new to me actually. This is in stainless steel, uh, not in titanium. So it is a heavy watch and you get to see the movement from the back and it is a beautiful movement. Uh, really, uh, really beautiful watch. Review for that coming up pretty soon and then here is the Mont Blanc Heritage GMT on my seven and a half inch wrist. It is a 40 millimeter watch. It's just over 11 millimeters thick. Um, and I really do love the basic general, like sort of layout of this watch. I love the, the dial, the dateless dial that it has. Uh, I think they did a really good job with this watch and it looks beautiful in different lights. The strap is beautiful. Um, you know, the only thing I could say is that the movement isn't, you know, extremely high end for the price that they are charging. So $3,000, um, you know, 3,100 or something like that. It's a lot of money for a watch that has a Salita movement in it. Uh, you do get a beautiful dial. You get that heritage, but technically it's bought for them. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you know, bottom line, it's an expensive watch. It's a good looking watch, but it's expensive for uh, what they're actually giving you. Uh, but it is a very well-made watch and it's beautiful. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Like I say, I go back and forth about things like this, especially heritage, especially major brands versus you know micro brands and independent brands uh, and the prices that they charge. So it's really hard to sort of put your finger on the price on things like this, but I do think this is expensive. I didn't pay that price. Uh, and like I said, even exquisite timepieces right now have it for, I think $2,500, which is a pretty decent price. Uh, but tell me what you guys think in the comments below really quickly. 
a very quick loom shot because this actually does have loom. It's not impressive, but it does have loom and we'll do a loom shot really quickly. Okay, well there you go. You can see there's just little dots for each one of the indices. Uh, and that's basically it. There is loom on those hands. The hands are sort of very interesting hands. They really did a great job with the dial on here. Everything about that dial is literally interesting. It's perfect. It looks beautiful. Uh, the case is nice, but it's really the dial. They did a great job on this dial. The color is perfect too. They got it between a salmon and a copper and it's metallic. It looks more copper than it does salmon. Uh, I just, I think it's beautiful. I think the color is perfect. If you're looking for a salmon or a copper dial, this is one of the best looking copper dials that I have seen. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Like I said, loom not great on here. It's already fading, but uh, that's not really what it's about. It's also a dress watch, so the fact that it has loom is excellent. Uh, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. And I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Uh, and don't forget to check out exquisitetimepieces.com. They actually have this watch, so uh, definitely worth checking them out. If you are interested in this watch, as I mentioned, this was sold out and they no longer make them. So um, pretty cool. Anyway. Thanks for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.